welcome back everyone to summer gym challenge here in psycho turtle collectibles place here in person in this tournament here and uh well we just the camera real quick <laughs> <laughs> accidentally uh my name is this is cornell once again joined by dennis geisler for round number three of the gym challenge summer tournament number three and uh can I say, this is like the midpoint of the tournament, and a lot of things can be shaken up based on, like, if people can win their rounds, if people lose their rounds, you know, it doesn't matter, like, what typically happens in this round, but you gotta know, it matters. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, I'm interested to see where this, uh, tournament progresses from here. We have seen a lot of Lander Asterian, not just a lot of Lander Asterian, but a lot of very impactful Lander Asterian so far. Uh, spoiler alert for this upcoming battle, there is no Lander Asterian. Uh, for our round three stream matchup, so I'm interested to see how that goes and how much of the uh, I guess less typical teams we see. I mean That's something I find interesting about this point in time Regulation D is almost over a lot of people are getting their kind of last gaps in before the DLC comes out in early September uh, I assume there will be a new format when that comes out, but regardless yeah, and regardless of all that, we are going to get another Regulation D battle as requested, and we're going to see a familiar team for Hector, while we get an unfamiliar team from Robert. As we're going to see Hector's stream, we have Chi Yu, Goldango, Bramblegast, Tornadus Incarnate, Urshavu Rapid Strike, and Fluttermane. And for Robert Matthews, it's going to be the Farigraph, Drifblim, Rillaboom, Urshavu Rapid Strike, an Amaristarian, and Heatran. I'm fascinated by both of these teams. Obviously, uh, as I mentioned, first thing that came to mind, no Landorus, but uh, what do you kind of see out of these teams, especially Roberts? That's a really interesting one. I mean, you do have the obvious unburdened mode with the with Rule of Boom Drippleum, because uh, t we've seen this from prior formats as well from with Drippleum. You know, we've seen a, a terrain activate uh, an item for that Drippleum, activate that unburdened, get rid of that Tailwind support that, a desperate, that the team desperately needs for Robert. But uh, for Kector, it's a pretty familiar team if you've been paying attention to the World Championships. Mm-hmm. If you would have seen Amelia Forbes play that team before, now you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that Bramblegast does have good answers to a lot of things in the meta, but really doesn't do anything against Robert's team here, so yeah, we'll see it. It's very sad. I like Bramblegast. Yeah, well, we're going to see two different Pokemon here from each side of the screen here. We're going to see Hector lead that Chi Yu and Fluttermane, and we're going to see Robert lead Heatran and Urshifu, and we're going to see the Bruno set this boost be a special attack booster. Yeah, first thing that comes to mind, Heatran has a really good matchup right now. We'll see what Heatran decides to do, but it doesn't really take any damage against anything that Hector can do. And now we're going to see a Terrestrialization come into play for Hector as... Yeah, it's going to be Hector with that Fluttermane going to Terra Fairy. You know, it will find a one-hit knockdown to Urshifu anyway, but like... It's not doing a lot of damage to Heatran even with that Speeds of Ruin drop. And we are going to see the Dazzling Green just straight up go through. We do see that the Urshifu will hang on with that Focus Sash. Pretty there desperately as well, because uh, if we get out to the Chiyu, potentially, you can go ahead and get a Searching Strikes off and get a potential punish, and that's exactly what we see. Yeah, really, really uh, well played by Robert there. I mean, not much Hector. Well, Hector probably could have tried to play around. I, I don't know. Uh, anything really gotten taken down by that Surging Strikes there. I think that the uh, Fluttermane might have been hit pretty hard, and even then, <laughs> that was a pretty hard hit from the Heat Wave. Yeah, especially because it's now single target because yeah. the GU got knocked out. Yeah, so that's uh, pretty good damage there. Curious to see. We do have Bramblegast. I'm very happy about that. I don't mean to be like the biggest Bramblegast enthusiast in the world, but I just like Bramblegast. <laughs> I mean, even without... The things that Bramble Gas would normally try to hard counter, you know, the wind moves. It still especially. gets Tailwind up on its own side from Tornadoes, yeah. Yeah, especially with things such as uh, the Tailwind boosting that activating that Wind Rider ability, you know, you don't have to be reliant on your opponent to have the wind moves, but you can just have the wind moves yourself. Mm -hmm. But do we see the Tailwind come out here from the Tornadoes here for Hector? Because uh, you're still pretty threatened by that Heatran. Mm -hmm. And if we were to see uh, the Flutter Mace switch out promptly for that Bramble Gas, hoping to catch an Aqua Jet potentially. And it was going to be, oh, actually goes into the Tornadus instead. And we're going to see a Bleak Wind Storm does double connect, will knock out the Urshifu. Not doing a lot of damage to Heatran. And do we see a speed drop at all? We do not. Let's see what the Heatran gets to do here. 
presumably heat wave again. Oh, well, he missed something. What did it miss? It you know activates the wind rider actually. Actually, yeah, I want to take that back. And heat wave can uh, not do a lot of damage to the tornado, but it puts it in range of another one. And Bramble gas got a boost. I <laughs> I'll be totally real. I didn't know that heat wave proc wind rider. That's a new one for me. <laughs> Turns out people are pretty forgetful sometimes. I mean, yeah. People can get fooled because Heat Wave's not a wind move on the name, but it is a wind move yeah, in the category. Yeah, it, it does look windy enough. Uh, well, speaking of windy, we do see a, a windy Anatomist Therian come into play for Robert. Uh, an Anatomist is typically a book we typically never see in the metagame, but uh, if well positioned correctly, it could do a lot of damage. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I just wonder here what uh, Hector will do is. Bramblegast has the, I guess, priority in terms of doing any damage here. Both of Robert's Pokemon are on the slower side, but also have a lot of... pack a pretty large punch. I mean, we'll see what punch comes in here. Tailwind is going to go ahead and give Hector a necessary speed boost that he needs, but also get that Bramblegast attack up to two, to two stages. As Power Whip misses its target, it went for the Heatran. And Heatran just goes with the Earth Power onto the Bramble Gas, knowing that they cannot touch it with Heat Wave. And the Dazzling Wing comes up from the Enamorous Therian, knocks out the Tornadoes, but Bramble Gas hangs on with 2 HP. That's a big survive for the Bramble Gas, but a very rough turn with the Power Whip miss. I wonder what Power Whip would have done at plus 2 against that Heatran, but either way... I don't know what Hector can do here, overall. Yeah, I really don't know what I could do right now, because, uh... It would have been a double resisted move because if it was hitting to a fire and a steel type with that heat chain would have been double resisted. I mean, yeah, you're plus two, but you're probably not doing enough damage. And Anaris, if it survives the turn, I think wins the game for Robert. We do are seeing uh, terrestrialization, and I believe this will be an Anaris to steal, and it is. Yeah, and I don't know what either of Hector's Pokemon can do against an Anaris steal here. You, you, you do see the axe come in for that. And Amorous, and we're going to see the Shadow Ball go into the Heat Train. Yeah, not doing a lot of damage now that it doesn't have its booster energy proc. Ooh, that's actually not that damage from that Power Whip, actually, into a double resist. Earth Power into the Bramble Gas from that Heat Train is enough for the knockout because of how much damage it took earlier. What did the Enamorous do here? It is just going to go for another Dazzling Gleam, and it is enough for a knockout basically because it was a single target move, and Robert quickly wins game one over Hector. Yeah, and that was... Uh... I don't know, it felt like a, a couple of unfortunate moments for Hector and Robert just having Heat Ran, which honestly, I don't know that any of the Pokemon that uh, Hector had on the field really answered uh, Heat Ran at all. Like, I, I don't know that any of them had real threatening damage on Heat Ran at any point. I mean, I mean, we do see how Hector's team, he does have a couple answers to er to the Heat Ran. You know, mm -hmm. Obviously, he has the Urshu, which he didn't bring, but yeah. also... Maybe he could have held on to the Terrestrialization for that Bramble Gas because uh, you would probably hold on for that Shadow Sneak. Yeah. Uh, Shadow Sneak's not doing a lot of damage, but maybe Terror Blast Ghost with that plus two boost would have probably knocked it out. Even at plus two, Shadow Sneak would have been a little better. Um, potentially, Chi Yu's Dark Pulse could have done a little bit more um, if it was able to get through turn one, which it obviously was not after that first Surging Strikes, and maybe that was the only thing that could really consistently get rid of the heat ran but i feel like that's the biggest thing that uh hector really has to try to deal with going into game two yeah it's like so many things that went wrong for hector it's just started with that urshifu outs being that chi yu but now i'm curious if it i mean we do see the choose terra ghost here for hector as we did see from the screen and mm -hmm. from the team sheets but would it even survive a surging strikes from that urshifu my answer is probably not I don't think it would. <laughs> I mean, it's physical defense. Urshifu's it's not really, good. really strong. <laughs> yeah, but you also have to realize this Urshifu is not holding a Mystic Water, so we saw that it as a Focus Sash. That earlier. is true. It is Focus Sash, so it is a little bit lower damage. I mean, it is lower damage. Probably has to go with a Jolly, probably a boosting nature to boost his speed more likely. But instead, oh, we're gonna have to see not to see the Heat Trend Lee. We're gonna see for Rigorath Urshifu for Robert, and heck, they present his own Urshifu, but with a Tornado. So. uh already mind games with the speed control for both sides yeah absolutely that'll be an interesting one which one decides to do that also have to remember that armor tail ability from fur a giraffe oh we are you seeing hector hover over that translation he does confirm it wait is that robert's going is that robert's translation going first or is that hector's is there, it's an urshifu but okay this looks like, this looks like it's hector's 
I mean, both these Urshifu are both Terra Water, so we really cannot yeah, tell who's the one <laughs> Terrasalizing. either in the moment. Because we saw Hector do it. Okay, it is Hector's. Robert Terrasalizes as well. Is this the Farikaraf for Water, or is this Urshifu? It's the... Farikaraf. That's very good. A leap of Surging Strike as well. And we did see the Tornadus not click Tailwind. It went for the Bleak Wind Storm, so... I mean, you are confident. You can't live in attack because of the Focus Sash here. Or if it misses the Urshifu outright, which it does. Oh, that's brutal. That's a brutal miss. A speed drop does go into the Farigraph, so if it went for the Trick Room, it would be pretty good right now. Searching Strikes goes into the Tornadus. It's not going to be doing enough for a knockout, but it will be in good range of an Aqua Jet later, or potentially that Psychic. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Surging Strikes comes out from Hector's Terrestrialized version. Oh, it went into the Terrestrialization. Oh, that's a Farigraph, so it's going to be a resisted hit. Farigraph will get to make an attack this turn, but did it go for the Psychic into Hector's? Uh, Tornadus or Urshifu, or did it go for Trick Room? Yeah, that'll be the big question here of what move it decides to go for. Okay. Well, it will be certainly be happy that Tornadus lowered its speed right now because of that Bleak Wind Storm from earlier. So for Regraph now, the fastest Pokemon in the field, but Psychic probably not enough to knock out Urshifu. Yeah, and a, a big uh, question is, is Robert's Urshifu faster than Hector's Urshifu? It moved first in the previous turn. Guess yeah. it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, Aqua Jet just does priority for you, so Tornado's not going to get an opportunity to go for another Bleak Windstorm. Psychic does go in, so the Urshifu no longer weak to, to Psychic anymore, but still does a lot of damage. As we see Urshifu go for the Surging Strikes, and I think he, yeah, he's going to take the knockout on the Free Yeah, solid set of uh, moves there for either side, able to get rid of the uh, Urshifu supporter on either end. I guess the question now is, what do each of them go into still under these Trick Room settings? It's going to be impossible, I believe, for Trick Room to <laughs> disappear. <laughs> oh my goodness, Hector has two fast Pokemon here, but <laughs> Robert does have another Royal Boom, so there's that going for him. And so, okay, so it's going to be Fluttermane coming in, so Fluttermane probably going to be the fastest thing in play, so we'll be moving last. Does that warrant the Chi Yu going to switch in for that? Fluttermane. I feel like either way, Robert can reasonably comfortably flick Surging Strikes into that spot and be fine with it, yeah? Yeah, or he could just go for the Wood Hammer or anything, you know? Even if, the, if you, even if Chiyu switches to for either one of these Pokemon, it's still going to be taking a lot of damage thanks to not only the Miracle Seeds holding that's boosting its uh, Grass-type attacks, but also the grassy terrain, as we do see the Woodhammer go bonk onto the Flutter main, catching Urshifu detecting. Yeah, very nice decision there, and uh, yeah, Chiyu might have been able to eat that one, but... Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the problem with detecting, because you were trying to figure out if you were going to get hit by the Urshifu, but instead, you got hit by a Woodhammer instead. Yeah, uh, very well read by Robert, picking, no, there's not going to be a switch, yes, Hector's going to try to protect that uh, Urshifu, and I think that's probably, well, Chiyu is uh, faster than Urshifu under this situation. No, we're... Oh. But Hector doesn't want to continue. <laughs> yeah, no, he's just going <laughs> to forfeit straight up. Unfortunately, the battle goes south quickly for Hector, and that is a swift 2-0 for Robert. Just showing you how broken, how powerful Urshifu is under the right <laughs> circumstances. Yeah, that uh, Unseen Fist is always ridiculously good. That Surging Strike's always ridiculously good. And uh, we saw both of those in full effect in that game. <laughs> yeah, and also it was a really interesting read that uh, Hector didn't think he would bring a Bramblegast in. Because uh, it would have been probably not that great in that matchup because he didn't bring that Heatran. Or if he did, mm -hmm. we, just, we just never saw it. That's like how dominant that Farika Raph was with that Trick Room. Yeah, absolutely. It just... Uh maintained so much control with that trick room and always uh played well around the speed that's always the difficult thing about speed control is having a pokemon that's faster outside of trick room and slower inside of trick room or s moves first regardless and that was very well done with the urshifu there getting the aqua jet off onto the tornadas able to get the tornadas out of there and keep kind of moving forward on all of that tornadas also never clicked a support move which mostly is indicative of the fact that one was scary face and two armor tail was always there which is another thing that for graph is just always really good with 
Yeah, but that will be closing out round number three here. We're gonna take another break. We'll get a, a, deeper into this tournament here. We're gonna go to round four next, so you don't want to miss out on some nice Pokemon action. <laughs> 